basically it's a, a road legal jet engine trike with a Rolls Royce Palouse engine in it and it's also got a Rover 3.5 V8 engine up front for road use. Aptly named Colossus, this jet powered tricycle is capable of reaching speeds in excess of 200 miles per hour with power to spare. Well the, uh, just the, the Rover V8 just uses unleaded fuel um, the jet engine itself uses kerosene and in the afterburner we use a mix of uh, petrol and diesel. Well the engine's rated at 360 shaft horsepower but when you light the afterburner you can feel it push you in the back when you're going along so yeah it, it gives you a sig significant amount of push. It's the first jet engine trike in the world, first and only at the moment so as far as I'm concerned it, it, it's, it's something in itself, it's already been done now so nobody else can do it and claim that they're the first and it's due in the Guinness Book of Records shortly. Um, not for that, because that, that can't be broken, but I think they're putting it in for the most powerful, you know, with the two combined engines. So, what was Paul's inspiration for making the jet trike? I just wanted something completely outrageous. What really sort of blew my mind was the Martin Hills Fire Force jet cars. I went to see that at the Bulldog Bash in Stratford-upon-Avon, and after seeing that, I just thought, yeah, I've got to do something. I didn't just want a track vehicle, it had to be a road vehicle as well, so I enlisted Martin's help, and uh, three years later we had this. I had a rough idea of what I wanted. The first thing I ever bought was the uh, back tyres, and I put them in my kitchen, spaced them apart, and put a table chair in the middle, and sort of drew around that, you know. So, was this mean machine built just to show off, or does Paul actually use it? Yeah, I use it quite a bit, yeah, use it quite a bit. The furthest I've ever travelled in one hit, it's probably about 400 miles, you know, and that's just like one journey, so it is a fully road legal machine and very reliable as well. Well, basically, this is, this is the jet engine, this is uh, the air intakes. Air is forced into the combustion chamber, mixed with fuel, ignited, and forced out the back. That's where you get your thrust from. This section here is the afterburner, fuel's pumped through there, uh, 1500 psi, then ignited in the back. If I don't ignite it, that's what causes the vapour. And is he ever tempted to kick in the jet engine on the road and leave rival bikers eating his dust? It's not really practical to use that jet on the, uh, on the highway, there's so much heat that comes out of it, it's going to cause an accident really, isn't it? with all that flame and vapour behind it. Being that it's got three wheels and it's, it's quite heavy, it's not the sort of thing you can throw into a corner. Um, I mean, it does handle very well, extremely well, but it's not the sort of thing you want to act like a hooligan with, you know, not, not, not racing anyway. So, is his jet trike just the tip of the jet-powered iceberg? I've done a few, a uh, couple more, mainly bikes. I've done a couple of trikes, uh, but this is like the most extravagant sort of thing I've been involved in. Uh, it's given me a big headache over the years, so I don't know whether I'll do another one, but only time will tell. 